Hey guys, welcome to this week's Lush Kitchen Menu. I'm sitting on my bed today because I've just eaten all of my Christmas chocolates and I'm wallowing in my gluttony and there was a cat sleeping next to me and it's buggered off. So uh, I'm just going to stay here and do the video here. It makes a bit of a change. My arms are looking really strange at the moment. I noticed in my previous video that I published, I noticed my arms looked strangely insect-like. I don't know what's happening. I think it's just because I haven't been to the gym for three weeks. I managed to bulk up my muscle in this particular area pretty quickly and uh, I think my body just shredding that muscle so it just makes me look a little bit like Jack Skellington. Not that anyone's going to worry about my arms but if you do notice my arms look strangely insect-like there is a reason for that. And uh, I'm going to try and not edit these videos as much because the editing process does take the longest amount of time so I'm just hoping that I can talk at you and not make so many mistakes so I don't have to do too much tweaking. Anyway let's just get on to this week's Lush Kitchen menu. As it is bank holiday on the Monday the Lush Kitchen is shut so we're going straight on to Tuesday and the first thing in the Lush Kitchen menu on Tuesday is after Tango foot mask. Now After Tango Foot Mask is a product that I would love to try. Unfortunately After Tango Foot Mask is not vegan and it does break my heart a little bit every single time a product comes back into the kitchen. I believe this is the third time it's come out in the kitchen and it just sort of rubs it in my face that it's not vegan. It sounds incredible. The ingredients list on this thing is just amazing. You have the kale in clay and you have the pumice and pumice is just a natural exfoliator and it works wonders. You find it in the Volcano Foot Mask and it really does just give that gentle exfoliation while the clay sort of absorbs any of the dirt and the grease that you have left in your pores and helps to remove that and clear your skin out naturally. It also features lemon juice and lemon juice is fantastic at bringing that radiance back as well as cleaning out those pores. It's a natural cleanser. There's also avocado. I mean, pff, what do I have to say about avocado? It's one of the greatest sources of natural fats. It does absolute wonders at helping to plump out those feet and just moisturise and nourish those feet. It has asparagus in it, it has honey and it's the honey that unfortunately stops this from being vegan. It doesn't smell like your typical Lush product as in for those of you who love the Comforter and Snow Fairy and really big bright zesty bubbly sweetie sort of smells. It's very lemony, that's all I can remember. It does have a sort of foody element to it, it's a little bit like the natural face masks that you find from Lush but it is all about exfoliating and nourishing, giving those feet that nice little pampering session after you hit the town on New Year's Eve. Me being me and being so awesome and having such an awesome social life. I don't need this product because I'm spending my New Year's Eve by myself in my room talking to myself. That is After Tango Foot Mask. Now the product I am most excited about is the second product coming out on Tuesday and I will be buying myself a good handful of these. This is the Volcano Foot Ballistic. Now this is and well it is up until Tuesday an exclusive to the Lush Oxford Street spa treatment. You can't buy it anywhere else. It's never been available for sale and it is incredible. For those of you who've read my blog or if you haven't head over there now I do have a review on this because I managed to get one on eBay and it's a tiny bomb. It's one of the small ones so like the small butter ball and it has a hole in the top and you have a sort of ready orangey <laughs> Don't know what I'm doing. Ready orangey colour inside, which obviously gives the name Volcano. In terms of ingredients, I believe that it is very similar to the ingredients that you find in the Volcano foot mask, but I will say that they don't smell the same. Volcano foot ballistic is not as strong, as potent as Volcano can be. I know a lot of people are put off because of how strong that smell is, but it is designed to do a similar thing. So the idea behind this foot bomb is that you put it in a bowl of water and then you put your feet in and your feet just sit there and soak up the goodness. And I believe it does have pumice and again, it has clay and has lots of ingredients to really exfoliate your feet. I will say right now, I was not expecting this product to be great whatsoever. And I was absolutely floored. It's taken the Lush Kitchen a long time, but if you go back through my Facebook or go back through their Facebook, I strictly remember right back in February requesting that they do a Lush Spa Week. So I will be buying loads of these. I highly recommend that you do. 
If you are somebody who is pressed for time, it is fantastic because I find when I have the volcano foot mask, you put it on, you wrap your feet in carrier bags, and then you've got to walk around the house like an idiot for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, scaring the hell out of your cats until you can then go in the shower and rinse it off, etc. This is just come home, throw one in a tub, put your feet in the tub and sit down and relax in front of the TV or blog or whatever you want to do and your feet will be left incredible. My feet were so silky soft and so smooth, so good for my feet and I reckon that you could probably halve these bath bombs even though they are the small ones and they are just really really nice. The smell is not offensive, it's not a strong smell but I would highly recommend. It is my product of the week for sure. And the final product coming out on Tuesday is the Pied de Pepper Foot Lotion. Now this is a product I do have and I bought one of these last year, I think it was, early last year. It's a very strange smelling foot lotion. I can't honestly say that the smell is something that I love. It's quite a thick lotion and it's quite a nice pretty coloured lotion. It's a nice sort of caramel brown colour. If you leave this for a couple of months, the cloves that you find in there sort of settle themselves into the mixture because when you first get it and open that pot, it's very strong, lots and lots of cloves, lots of spice going on, and it's not a particular favourite of mine, but a couple of months in, those cloves do settle down a bit, and then you get a nice warming smell. Ingredients wise, there are lots of things in here. This is supposed to obviously first of all moisturise, and you get cocoa butter in here, there's olive oil in here, there's lots of butters and oils that help to do that. The second thing is, it's supposed to deodorise your feet, and you have things like cinnamon leaf oil, there's clove bud oil, there's ginger oil, and you do get that spicy smell and it does help to alleviate those pesky smells and keep your feet feeling nice and fresh and it does honestly make your feet feel really really good. The difference between this and your regular body lotions is I think it really comes down to the smell. I don't think there's much difference in terms of consistency. Although it comes in a small pot like this it does last a long time. I've actually used this a good five to six times already. I need to use it more now that I'm back at the gym. You don't need an awful lot at all and I think that's another thing that makes it really really special. With a body lotion I tend to find that I use more and I'm just going to moisturise my wrist with some foot lotion as you do because I've just spilt a little bit. On the skin the vanilla comes out more and the cloves and the lemon come out more. It's quite a comforting smell. It wouldn't be a summery product you want to use. It's, it's a bit too thick and wholesome for the lighter months of the year. I don't need to get any. I've got one tub but if you haven't tried it before I do recommend that you try it. If you're fans of things like the Jacko Bath Ballistic or the Pumpkin Soap it's sort of in the same range as that smell wise. The smell doesn't linger particularly too long after you've applied it but then I'm not in a habit of constantly sniffing my feet like some weirdos might do. On to Wednesday in the Lush Kitchen menu just a single product this week getting them back into the flow as they've got to make three on the Tuesday and that is Demon in the Dark Shower Gel. This is a product that will sell out quickly because it is so popular. It's one of those niche products that just has this really strong obsessive fan base, I think, just like the Ghost scent. It's not a personal favorite of mine. It's beautiful in color, as you can see, and it's very moisturizing. It lathers up well in the shower. The scent lingers on your skin for ages, like freaking ages. You leave the bathroom and you go back two hours later and you can still smell it. It's not an offensive smell. I just just don't get the hype around it. The idea of this is that it is apple and mint. Now I'm not a massive fan of apple, so white doesn't do it for me at all. I'm just not particularly enamoured by it, although this year the bath bomb did sort of win me over. I like mint smelling products, I'm not going to rave about mint smelling products. So together, two scent families that I don't think particularly work that well together. When you smell this product, it is so refreshing. I will give it that, so refreshing. If you need something to perk you up in the mornings, this is going to wake you up with a smack to the forehead. I can tell you that, it's just so crisp, so fresh. I wouldn't say uplifting, it's just refreshing. It's one of those mint smells that really travels up your nose, like you're smelling Vicks. So it will clear those airways out for those who are a little bit snuffly in the winter time. The key ingredient in this is a peppermint infusion and you, there's no denying it, you can smell that peppermint straight away. It's like you're eating extra strong mints and then you take a bite of a Granny Smith apple and the two scents combined are just weird. On to Thursday, I'm just looking at this menu, it's such an odd menu. I don't think anything really goes together well at all. That's kind of cool because you have an accumulation of products that are very different from each other. The first product coming out on Thursday is the Bar Humbug Bubble Bar. 
This is a bit of a weird afterthought because this is a Christmas product, or was a Christmas product, first released last Christmas 2015. I think broke a lot of hearts when it didn't make an appearance this year, so Lush Kitchen are being very generous bring it out at the start of 2017. I fell in love with this bubble bar last year. This was one of those highly rated products that I could not get enough of. I'm not going to buy any because my news resolution is to cut down and I have three of these, including this one here. Visually absolutely stunning. Just have a look at that. This is discolored very slightly. It's not as deep purple as it was. But it's coated in a really light layer of silver luster and you don't have to worry about that staining your bath staining your skin you don't find that much in the water at all as you can imagine with a color like this your bath is going to be such a vivid purple color and it produces the silkiest water and the most beautiful fragrant fluffy bubbles honestly it's such an effective bubble bath smell wise first of all it shares its scent with bertie soap it is inspired by um licorice all sorts so this is fennel tarragon and although it doesn't say it in the ingredients list it's lemon but I think the lemon comes out from the bergamot oil that you find in there just a natural fennel sort of licorice -y smell it's not a thick treacle licorice smell it's more of a freshly picked freshly squeezed fennel if you take fennel and sort of cook with it you don't get that thick treacle element but it is definitely fennel it's not that lemony it just has a slight tweak of lemon on the side this is great to use across two to three baths you can half you can quarter this bubble bar it is beautiful if you've not tried it and you dislike fennel stay away from it because it is highly fennel if you've not tried it but it sounds good i highly recommend that you get it you won't regret it and i'm really glad that lush kitchen are bringing this back also coming out on thursday is easily one of my top five shampoos it is reincarnate solid shampoo bar I have still got one piece of this and I'm desperately trying to reduce my shampoo stash because I have a whole, whole lot of shampoo. This would easily win the award for ugliest shampoo, perhaps one of the most ugliest Lush products you've ever seen. It just looks like you've gone down the beach, grabbed some wet sand, some rocks, some clay and shoved it into the mould and then made what looks like a really terrible bread and butter pudding slice. It's taken me a while to get to this stage because originally I didn't like the smell of this. And actually originally I only gave this two bottles and when I got a fresh one from the kitchen and used it, I could have cried thinking about how many people I might have put off buying this. It actually sort of smells like Sultana's. For those who've got a bar, take it out, give it a sniff, see if you sort of see what I mean when I say it smells of Sultana's. But in terms of what it does, it is amazing. The reason why it is this colour is that one of the key ingredients in this is henna, and henna is a fantastic natural product that helps to revitalise and revigorate, is that even a word, revigorate? No, invigorate your natural colour and bring out those glossy tones as well as moisturising and nourishing your hair. And it does. For my natural hair colour, and this is my natural hair colour, it works wonders. When I use this, first and foremost, it brings out the natural highlights in my hair, and I'm not talking about the ones that I've sort of stuck in. So it almost looks like I've dyed my hair when I haven't. At the same time, the henna is also so nourishing, and I just find my hair is so soft and shiny, but naturally shiny, not greasy shiny. When I use this shampoo bar, I don't have to put so much argan oil in my hair because you can probably tell, I mean, my hair is just unkempt all the time anyway. I don't want to straighten it all the time because that will just damage my hair even more. So I leave it unstraightened. And as you can see, I'm just looking at myself to sort of show you. I have a little wispy bit sticking up here and the base of it is quite frizzy and it's quite thin. So I have to put lots of argan oil to straighten it, to make it shiny, to make it glossy. This shampoo bar does all of that. So I don't really know why I'm not using it right now. It looks terrible, don't be put off. This lovely piece here was gifted to me by the Lush Kitchen and I'm so glad they sent it to me because this is definitely the next shampoo bar I'm going to be using and I might even start using it this week. It creates such a thick, foamy lather to put in your hair. I would actually highly recommend with this that perhaps you actually wet it and then massage it into your hands and then use the foam in your hands to do that because this is one of the ones that would actually probably shrink down pretty quickly if you keep it exposed to water for too long. And the final product coming out on Thursday is the Skinny Dip Buttercream. 
Now I've not had the privilege of having skinny dip for quite a while and the reason for that really is because I don't like it that much. When the Lush Kitchen first came out, skinny dip shower gel was one of the products that everyone was just screaming to come out and I joined in on that screaming because as a British person we just like to join those queues and do what everyone else is doing without realising what's going on. I was kidding, that's a sweeping statement and not true at all but you know. So I joined that queue of skinny dip lovers so when it came out I was so excited and when they arrived the disappointment was pretty horrific because I sniffed it and thought really is this what all the fuss is about let's just say on a positive side it works quite well for a buttercream you just need a little scoop it goes far it lathers up it's more moisturizing than a soap I find smell wise disappointing somebody described it to me as being like white chocolate and coconut and that is the reason why I got excited by it it doesn't smell of white chocolate at all and I don't particularly think it smells that that strongly of coconut. The key ingredients in this buttercream is clove bud oil and cedarwood oil and it's I don't know it's a very neutral smell you get the clove bud oil it's not a heated clove bud and then you just get a very 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 slight coconut sort of slightly woody smell underneath. It's one of those smells that is forgettable. I've got a friend who raves about it, says absolutely beautiful, says in the shower he can pick up that white chocolate element. It doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't make me gag or sick or anything like that. It's just one of those products that I sniff and say let's move on, let's find something out. It doesn't do anything to me whatsoever. Weirdly enough, Lush actually say that the scent in Skinny Dip should be a combination of clove and violet and yes I can smell the clove and the violet and the violet sort of gives skinny dip that very slight floral undertone. The violet is really low in the mix and you can only really smell it because Lush say it's there. Sorry if I don't sell it to you. We are moving on to Friday and we start out with a bath bomb called the Geofizz Bath Ballistic. Lush described this as being like a Lush spa in bath bomb form and I can really see why that is. The key ingredient in this is coarse sea salt and for those who are not aware of what sea salt does, it is a natural moisturising, cleansing, beautiful product. It softens the skin, it helps to detoxify the skin. So Geofiz features cypress oil, it features seaweed absolute, it features pine oil. So it's a refreshing green piney sort of smell with an underlying little kick from the cypress oil to give it that richness. What is great about this bath bomb is that when you start dissolving it and they are quite heavy so you might find that yours just sinks down to the bottom it's not a product that's going to produce a beautiful array of colours in the water but once you start using it or once it starts dissolving if you look at it carefully you'll notice that the majority of that bath bomb is actually not made up of bicarbonate of soda it's actually made up of salt so it's very unique in that way. If you're somebody who has skin that gets very irritated by the carbonate of soda and citric acid etc you should definitely give this one a go because it's much more gentler on the skin it's a lot more natural because as well as the coarse sea salt it also features other salt as well. This bath bomb is probably the most natural bath bomb that Lush have produced Ever. As I said a minute ago, it doesn't do a fantastic display in the bath. You're not going to get lots of lovely colour. You get a very, very light pine green colour and the bath bomb dissolves pretty quickly. But if you're somebody who just needs to recuperate and regenerate your skin, it works quite well in that way. It's a little bit to me like physiotherapy in that, although I didn't really appreciate the smell and the bath bomb doesn't blow me away, it's not one that I'll be buying, it definitely did make me feel a little bit calmer afterwards. And I know most baths will make you feel calmer, but this one did just sort of give me that revitalizing feeling like I had been pampered a little bit more than just a regular bath. And the final product coming out on Friday is Waylander Razzle Soap. This is one of those soaps that I bought years ago on eBay along with a uh, Middle Earth Turn to Stone and when it arrived it just looked like somebody had gone down the beach and plucked a symmetrical square looking piece of mud and sent it to me. I was really underwhelmed by this soap. So this is one of the weirdest soaps and I'm going to tell you straight away if you love lovely beautiful sweet smelling products you will hate this product. This product is made up of kaolin clay, razzle mud and pumice powder and that's the majority of the ingredients ingredients you'll find there. So smell wise it smells like dirt. It smells like fresh but dried kicked up dirt, a little bit of dampness maybe. Now Razu Mud is known for being 
absolutely fantastic and packed full of nutrients to help moisturize and clean your skin. The same with kaolin clay, the same with pumice. So all three of those ingredients there are just jam-packed with so much natural goodness for your skin. It's slightly gritty, the soap, and that comes from the pumice powder. So if you like a soap that you have a gentle exfoliation as well, this one is a big thumbs up. To add a little bit of spice, you also have patchouli oil and you have vertivert oil. And alongside that dried mud element, you can smell dry, spicy patchouli. It's one that I possibly would buy again. I won't be doing so this week because this is my Lush kitchen ban, it's coming into place and I'm going to stick to it. It does lather up quite well, it's one that you should keep out of the way of the running water because it does shrink very very quickly so I'd suggest perhaps wetting yourself and then <laughs> I don't, I don't suggest wetting yourself. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm not going to explain that one. I would suggest standing outside of the running water when you're scrubbing yourself or washing yourself with this soap. So that is my first Lush Kitchen video 2017. Uh, top three products from the kitchen this week. Definitely Volcano Foot Ballistic. Number one product. I'm so excited. It's the only product I'm going to buy this week. Second product of the week. Definitely Reincarnate Solid Shampoo Bar. Third and final product. Definitely Bar humbug bubble bar. I hope you've enjoyed my first Lush Kitchen video 2017. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I appreciate it. I cannot believe that I've managed to get over 10,000 subscribers. Here's to future videos. Enjoy your week. Let me know below what you have bought or what you're planning to buy. Take care and see you next week.